Welcome to the Leader Mentality Show with Rob Clements. As we like to do, I have a great leader on the show today that we actually met at CCMF just a couple weeks back. And this guy is the real deal. Uh, he's a guy that we know from the Alabama Theater, that we know from Carolina AM and WFXB. And you might know him from a number of other places, even dating back to when he won Star Search back in 94, 95. But I'm talking about none other than Greg Rolls. And I think on the leader mentality, while we're talking about finding ways to inspire others and to show a passion for what you do, working behind the scenes and having an optimism to meet your goals, that's what Greg Rolls embodies. So I want to do a special setup for this to explain to you guys what you're going to be hearing in this show that meant a lot to me. And we're going to start off with Greg talking about a clip of how he got started at the Grand Ole Opry. And I think it's just a really great story. So we're going to start there and then you're going to get to hear some amazing uh, music that he put on with an acoustic guitar right live on scene when he met with me. So anyway, without further ado, Greg Rolls. Which we would sneak into the Grand Ole Opry house and he would stand on the circle, sing a song as I sat in the front row, and then we would switch spots and I'd sing to him, only the work lights were on okay. and the footlights on the stage. And uh, Pal Durham, the owner, of the manager of the Grand Ole Opry came in and called us in there one day and asked us what we were doing in there. We told him that we worked at the park right next door. Yeah. And he said, uh, and I thought this was our last day at Opera Land. I thought okay. we were getting fired. <laughs> yeah, right. He said, I want you all to do me a favor. And I said, and we said, what? He said, I want you to put your suit and ties on. Saturday night, you're our special guest here at the Grand Ole Opry. So John and I walked backstage, and Hal walks us right into Roy Acuff's dressing room, who then was the king of country music before George Strait. Right on. And then in comes Bill Monroe. In comes Ricky Skaggs. In comes Connie Smith, all the stars of the Grand Ole Opry, to come in and welcome us wow. to say hello. So we were immersed into the country music. I mean, all these icons around us. Man. And uh, so John was one of those ones that we, um, we became friends with early on. And we had a band called Texas C. Okay. Uh, and, uh, Richie McDonald, Dean Sams, John Rich, Michael Tucker, and myself, and Michael Britt, who's a guitar player. We formed a band to make money at night uh, while we weren't performing in the park during the day. Okay. That band ended up going two years later and become, now they're known as Lone Star. So yeah. if you know Lone Star, mm. then you know that group. So those are all my old friends. Wow. Um, and I ended up going on Star Search with Ed McMahon, won that. So we, that's when we kind of <laughs> so, separate, we so you parted separate. ways. Do you still talk to those guys Oh, sometimes? yeah, Dean, Dean wow. all the time. Cool. Yeah, those guys are road warriors and Man. still... Still and still going. Of course, John's done so well. Yeah, he owns half yeah. of Nashville now, so he's done really well. Man, and, and I tell you what. By the way, you're giving me so much great content that I, I want to hear the whole story. But I feel like there's a lot of mini stories within the story, like Star Search. Mm -hmm. You talk about being nervous. Yeah. You, can you remember back that, that time that and what was, that was like? That was like nausea, like uh, <laughs> hurl, uh, yeah. hurls. Because that was the first time I'd ever been on national television. Yeah. yeah. They taped all the shows at now what the, what's called Hollywood Studios in Orlando. It was MGM. Right. But Brandy and I went down there for one week. We were on for one. We knew we had one shot. Sure, sure. So one week turned into nine weeks. And I won the entire thing uh, in 1994, 95. Wow. So, so then good. we started going around the country with uh, Ed Mann and his wife promoting Star Search. So, okay. So I'd go on local television shows and bring a guitar and sing a song, yeah. tell a story. But they were they were like mom and pop on the set. They mm -hmm. were incredibly, uh, they were great encouragers like yourself. Yeah. They were wonderful. But man, what a great experience that was. Man, I, well, I got to tell you, so with, at what one of these points, was there one where you just said, I made it, Not it, it maybe made it, not in a cocky way, but like, I'm doing this. This is my dream and it's happening. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, the the day that I won Star the day after I won Star Search, got a phone call because I was back in the park, yeah. entertaining, back in the same show, like sure. nothing nothing ever happened. Yeah, yeah. It, the, we had the announcement on the stage at the Grand Ole Opry with Ed McMahon mm -hmm. that I'd won. Uh, next day, I'm out performing in the park. I get a phone call. They said, uh, by the way, uh, an administration they got a phone call for you, Greg. The colonel is holding the line. Well, the only colonel I knew of was Colonel Sanders. That was it. <laughs> that was the only colonel that I knew. Right? There you go. So we get up there, there's a lady on the phone, she said, Greg, uh, Colonel's holding the line for you. It's Colonel Tom Parker, Elvis's longtime manager, wow. who was sitting in his living room watching me on Star Search. So the next thing I know, he's fl flying me and Brandy out to Las Vegas 
to have lunch at the Las Vegas Hilton, oh, my uh, gosh. to have lunch, which turned into a five-hour meeting with the colonel. He excused Brandy and uh, Luann, his wife, and it started a friendship. Now, I, and you, if you've seen the movie, there's a, he was an eccentric guy, yeah. incredible business-minded guy. Uh, but he, the, so after that meeting, we flew back to Nashville. And the next thing I know, I'm uh, in Buddy Lee Attractions office, Buddy Lee being the second largest talent buyer at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about relationships. Yeah, for sure. Colonel Thompson told Buddy Lee, said, listen, you need to sign this guy before anybody else signs him. So all of a sudden, within a week, I was on the ro roster with Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, the Dixie Chicks, Ronnie Millsap, uh, Lori Morgan, some of my heroes yeah. that I had been admiring for so many years, and now I'm in print with all of these mm. people. My dad said when he saw my name up with Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings, he said, I can die and go to heaven. <laughs> this, is, this is it. For your dad, he was like, you've that, definitely made that, it now. That, that. And, and so so I, when that started happening, uh, they started booking dates uh, that were $7,500. Wow. So they booked me to play $7,500, and I thought, I told Brandon, we're going to be rich. Uh, yeah, right, this right. Is it. Right. So this ties into your question. Yeah. But at $7,500, you know, you, you, we've got to lease a bus, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to pay for your van. You got to pay for hotel rooms, gas in the bus. You got to pay for a driver. Oh yeah. You got to pay for business manager, manager, publicist, all these things. At seventy-five hundred bucks, you come home with four hundred dollars. Oh God, yeah. So if you didn't have shrink wrap tapes, my Brandy would sit there with a hair dryer, shrink wrapping tapes. <laughs> if you didn't sell some of those tapes at a gig or sell a few T-shirts, you were broke. You really are doing it for the love of it at that that's, point, that's right? What? I got you. You think some? And listen, these artists that are playing, I admire all these artists that are out here playing. But the ones that are up and coming, I mean, the people think it was a glitz and there's glamour. Yeah. You see the backstage of most cities. These people aren't here to see Myrtle Beach. They're here to get up and entertain all the folks that have come to see them. Yep. But it's not, it's not a glamorous lifestyle, living on a bus on a bunk. You, you know, and, and I do respect this. I think it's something for us all to take away in life. It, whether you're a, a single A baseball player, uh, we talked about some other guys working their way up through things. It's, it's that behind the scenes, maybe nobody knows your name yet. Maybe you're out there and you're just working away, chipping away. But if you keep doing it, you have the perseverance. A lot of times you can be go from that little stage to the main stage. Up until then, you may be eating a can of raviolis for dinner, right? You are scraping by. Yeah, yeah. yeah and your family's going, what are you doing? What right? are you doing? It's for the love of what the craft of doing it. No question about yeah. it. So, Greg, you know, with, with, and thank you for that backstory because I didn't know a lot of that stuff you just told us, but what what's next for Greg Rolls? I mean, you know, I, I've seen some of the stuff you've been doing. It's amazing, but what's your next uh, five years look like? Well, I, I think that, um, I, I, I think as long as we're here on this earth, we're supposed to be growing, mm -hmm. aspiring. Yeah. I don't think we should be sitting still. There's something that we can always do. So, uh, Brandy and I have had a dream. Uh, actually, she asked me what my dream was a few years ago. And I said, if there's one thing left you want to do, and I said, I'd like to open a theater. Yeah. So next April here in North Myrtle Beach, we open the Greg Rolls Legacy Theater, 800 seats, Woo! which will be my variety show. I mean, yeah, that's and awesome. That, and I've got an incredible cast that we're going to be rolling out here in the next few weeks. Okay. Um, but it's now Valorous Church, but it started as the old uh, uh, Dixie Jubilee back in 89, 90. Okay. So we're, tr we're transforming it back into a theater. Nice. And this is Rob Clemens. I'm back with the Leader Mentality Show. More importantly, I'm back with Greg Rolls. He's going to do a song for us, but I understand there might be a little story behind this song. Every story usually has a, every song has a story. Yeah. And this one is, uh, uh, Charlie Daniels uh, had asked, uh, they'd asked me to sing for his private Christmas party back in the, in the mid-90s. And, I, and uh, when they came to me and asked me, I thought, well, are you sure? I, we, Charlie Daniels. And they said, will you do it? And I thought, <laughs> they said, well, we'll give you $50. And I was going to tell them I'd do it for free, right? Right. And uh, so he had rented out the second story of the Merchant's Restaurant downtown on Broadway in Nashville. And uh, so I went down there, but they said, but you've got to wear a Char uh, Charles Dickens hat, Charles Dickens coat, Charles Dickens scarf, Charles Dickens gloves. Because they wanted us to look like this period of, you know, singing Christmas carols. You know, okay. And give that look, right? Yes, yes. They said, don't worry, you're going to sit up in the corner and nobody's going to pay attention to you. Well, we did it. Me and three of my friends from Opryland, I play guitar, they all sing harmony. We got up in the corner and started singing these Christmas songs, 
And uh, Charlie, like a Hallmark movie, started took his wine glass and ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so I would like to get. I want you to give all the entertainers your most respect and attention. And at that time, Charlie grabbed his chair, drug it all the way across the floor, and sat right in front of me. And then his wife, then his band, then all of his family members. So now we're in the corner. Right, right. With Charlie Daniels and his entire entourage, right? Man. And I mean, we're sweating great because <laughs> right. we're in these still inside. So. Um, and at that time, I looked at my friends thinking, we should have rehearsed. Oh, yeah. Right? You know, and I'm getting a little nervous here, going, this is not going to be good. We sang for 45 minutes, and walked out into the hall. Charlie followed us out and gave us $100 a piece. Oh, wow. Tipped us. And he said, Greg, he said, I want you to sing next year at my Christmas party. And I thought he was kind of blowing smoke. Yeah, yeah. Called and invited us to sing at the Mad Boar restaurant. The next for the Christmas party. This time we rehearsed. Yeah. Right? And, and uh, were you dressed as Charles? And, no, and we didn't have to. We didn't have to go in character. Good point. And then, um, and then he started asking me to come to some of his corporate events as his AOD, which wow. means agent on duty. I put on a suit and tie. Okay. And okay. I'd walk into some of these small rooms where Charlie would entertain fifty people, yeah, hundred people, never, no large crowds. And so, as an AOD, I held Charlie's guitar, I held Charlie's mm. fiddle. And I held Charlie's check. Wow. Oh. And so uh, we, he started, he poured into me. Yeah. He started encouraging me. We'd sit in the little back rooms of these little hotel and he asked about Brandy and he asked about writing and wanting to know what I was doing. And, and I think that's um, something that we should all do. Yeah. We have no yeah. idea how much uh, we can change someone's life by just encouraging them, pouring into them, wow. giving them words of encouragement. You know exactly what I'm talking about yeah. because you've done that with me. You've poured into me. That's one of the reasons why I'm here. I appreciate that. You know, that. you make me feel like a superhero when I, and you have a gift of doing that. Charlie did too. Wow. And uh, so cool. I'm going to sing you a song that um, he would go in these, these small rooms with a few people watching, tell a couple stories. He was a great storyteller. Yep. Great man of God. But this is one of my favorite uh, Charlie Daniels uh, song. Beautiful. I'm no good, crazy as love. I get up in the morning, I get down in the afternoon. Kinda like my old blue tech hound, I kinda lay around in the shade. I ain't got much money, I dang sure got it made. I ain't asking nobody for nothing. If I can get it on my own. Don't like the way I'm living. You just leave this long hair country boy alone. Preacher man talking on a TV, put on rock and roll. Wants me to send a donation, cause it's word about my soul. Jesus walked on the water. I know that it's true. Sometimes I think that preacher needs to do a little walking too. I ain't asking nobody for nothing. I can't get it on my own. You don't like the way I'm living. You just leave this long hair country boy alone. to marry, a rich girl wants to flirt, a rich boy goes to college while us poor boy goes to work, a drunkard wants another drink of wine and a politician wants my boat, I don't want much of nothing but I'll take another sip of coke, I ain't asking nobody for nothing, I can't get it on my own. You don't like the way I'm living. You just leave this long hair country boy alone. You don't like the way I'm living. You just leave this long hair country boy alone. Almost had it right there. Woo! <laughs> 
Beautiful stuff, man. Good stuff. Greg Rolls, baby. Hey. What a pleasure. Man, it's been good stuff. What a pleasure to be here with you today. Thanks for pouring into all of these people, including me, and doing what you're doing and inspiring other people when they see people telling their stories. Well, Thank you, Rob. It's I really, appreciate it's it. It's great to be here with you, buddy. Well, it means a lot to me. Talk about a word of encouragement. We all talk about how can we be a leader. Yeah. Sometimes a leader, you just let somebody know something special they're doing. That yeah. might be all the lift they need. That's so, right. That's right. Very powerful stuff. Greg Rolls, how can we check you out, by the way, Greg? Uh, so, gregrolls.com. Uh, and uh, the new website will be Greg Rolls uh, Legacy Theater.com. So, either one of those. Best Very way good. to take it. Thank Bless you for being on the show, Bless my friend. You, Rob. Bless you. And we'll see you guys in a little bit. Uh, Greg Rolls, the Leader Mentality Show. We'll see you next time.